everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to show you part two of my birthday book haul. So I do have a couple of books that you guys have sent me. Again, thank you very much, but of course I will thank you specifically when your book comes around. And then some books that I bought for myself slash books that my husband got me. Yes, I already received the gifts from my husband because I'm basically a three-year-old child and when his birthday is passed, which is the 6th of April, I get very excited for my own birthday and I will hassle him once I know that he has gifts until he gives them to me. So that basically means that by the 21st of June, when my birthday is actually happening, I have already got all the gifts that he has for me and that's exactly what happened now. So I do have a total of 30 books to get to so without further ado let's get into the books. And I'm going to start with the books that I got from some fellow lovely booktubers and the first ones that I have here with me are the ones that I got from Stacy's All Booked. Again Stacy, thank you a lot I am really excited to get into these. The first one is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. This is actually the first book by him that I am going to try and I'm very intrigued by this one. It's the first in the Lightbringer series and it has a very hard magic system which a lot of people compare to Brandon Sanderson's magic systems. In this one people can use colors and we follow the Black Prism who is the most powerful wizard because he can use all shades of colors. But if I'm not mistaken the more you use this magic the earlier you will die. So yeah this sounds really cool. I had no idea that it's this thick of a book. It's over 700 pages which for fantasy is already on the chunkier side and then especially in a five book series yeah this is going to take me some time but i'm very excited that i have this one and that i can jump into it if i want to and then the second book that she got me is where the crawdads sing by delia owens so this is not a fantasy book and i'm actually very excited about that because i want to try a little bit more genres beside fantasy and I think that this one is historical fiction because it's set in the late 1960s where a murder occurred and then a lot of people suspect this girl who lives in the marshes but a lot of things happen. On the back it says painfully beautiful at once a murder mystery a coming of age narrative and a celebration of nature so this sounds amazing and I have heard from Stacy that she would like to body read this one so of course I do. I'm very excited for these two books thank you Stacy. Then next up I got this beautiful hardcover by Sarah over at Sarah Reads. Thank you, Sarah. So this is The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buhlman, if I am pronouncing that correctly. And this is actually the first one in a new series. It's also a debut and it came out in 2021. So it recently came out. And it's actually the book pick of the month over at Steve Talks About Books and Stuff's book club. And I couldn't read it because I didn't have the book but now thanks to Sarah I can participate in the discussion so again thank you Sarah I'm really excited to read this one. In this one you follow a thief there's a goblin war going on or was going on I think that now it's finished by the time that you follow this thief. There is an animal companion you have a blurb by uh, Brent Weeks actually who says that it has a crazy magic system and that it's balanced by tight characterization so all of this sounds that I'm going to love it so thank you Sarah I'm quite excited to read this one. And then I got some books that I got from Steve over at Steve Talks About Books and Stuff and his lovely wife Brandy. Again, thank you so much. So first of all, they sent me an Amazon gift card. I wasn't expecting that and I got it in the morning. And I think by 9 a.m. I bought three books with it, so I was very excited. They arrived in the mail by now and the first one is Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. So I first of all tried to pick a book that I could read with Brandy if she wants to because this is a fantasy romance and in this one you follow a young woman who has powers that she can actually survive being burnt because in this world um, each village is required to send a young woman to the empire to be burnt for the crowd's entertainment so this village where she lives in keeps sending her because she can survive this however one gladiator finds out and he starts blackmailing her to use her powers to free him from slavery so it's fantasy romance i I think we all know where this is probably going. Grace Draven is a very known uh, fantasy romance author. I've heard a lot of great things about this. I think that this is the first in a series but it has a very clear beginning and ending. So you could read it as a standalone but there is a second one in the series out already and I think that this one follows another romantic couple. So I'm very excited for this one and Brandy or anyone else if you want to buddy read this someday with me then please let me know or otherwise I'll read it and I'll let you know if it's worth your time. Then I bought The Mirror's Truth by Michael R. Fletcher. So I recently bought Beyond Redemption, which I think was on my 
part one or in my part one birthday book haul and that's the July book of the month over at uh, Steve's book club and then this one is the August book of the month book club so I already had one for July but then with this gift card I could also buy the one for August I'm very excited for these two Michael Fletcher is an author that I have heard a lot of good things about that it's grimdark plus you could say especially a step up from the first law trilogy I like that but I would like to see some darker content as well so I'm very excited for this one and I'm really glad that I have the two books so that I can participate in the discussions as well and then the last book that I picked up was The Traitor Baru Cormorant by Seth Dickinson so this one is a first in a trilogy I think that the trilogy is called the Masquerade trilogy and I wanted to read this one in 2021 the entire trilogy but then unfortunately because I kept picking up series that weren't on that list I'm not going to get to this one I think but I've heard that this one has a lot of political intrigue you basically have Baru and she lives in a country that is colonized by other uh, by another empire I suppose but she tries to infiltrate in this empire in this empire's politics to break it from within so it sounds maybe a little bit like red rising but that one has a lot more fighting you have somebody who infiltrates in the warrior fraction of that empire while here this is more political intrigue and I've heard a lot of great things about this especially from Tammy Tries to Read she really enjoyed this trilogy so my hopes are very high and I'm glad that I now have it it's also not that long the first one is under 400 pages so I might still be able to read at least the first one this year so really excited for that one so they already spoiled me a lot but then I got this one in the mail from them as well. So this is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. Stacy is today doing a readathon for this one, so a 24-hour readathon. I have participated already, I am only at chapter 4, but it's morning, so I am going to read a little bit more today, even though I do have some things to do. A birthday party, not my birthday party, unfortunately, but still I'm going to have fun. I am so happy that I also got this one because I couldn't really participate again because I didn't have the book, but now I do. And I am only four chapters in, but I'm really enjoying myself. I think that this is going to be a step up from Akatar, so the first book in the series. So that's amazing. It is a little bit thicker than that one, so I don't think that I'm going to finish it in this 24-hour readathon. But I'm definitely going to finish it this month. And I already enjoyed the discussion that we had. So Steve and Brandy, thank you so much for all of these gifts. I don't know when I will get the time to read all of them, but I am very happy that I have an amazing TBR waiting for me. And then we're going to get into the books that I bought myself, slash the books that my husband bought me. To be honest, I don't really know where the books that I bought for myself and where the books that my husband bought me are going to start, because I basically tell him what he needs to buy me, so it's, it's all the same, it's one big pile. But it's still a lot of books. And the first one is The Wall of Storms by Ken Lu. This is actually the second one in this series, The Dandelion Dynasty. I already have the first one, but I haven't read it yet. However, again, Tammy Tries to Read told me that this is actually also a trilogy with a lot of political intrigue, but that it might be best to read this one before I read the Masquerade trilogy, because this is slightly more accessible, I'm not quite sure, or had a little bit less trigger warnings maybe that's the case anyway she's a very big fan of this one I have very big hopes I think that this is influenced by Chinese history so that's very exciting I now have the first and the second book I am waiting for the third one I think that that comes out at the end of this year and basically the reason why I buy these ones even though I haven't read the first one yet is because I always have this irrational fear that the hardbacks are going to get out of print. I have the first one in hardback, so now I definitely need to buy the second and when the third one comes out in hardback so that everything matches. Yes, I am that petty and I do find that important. So I'm still going to hopefully read this one, not this year. Oh no, that's true. I have these on audiobook, so I am going to read these this year. Okay, th th that's good because the second book is almost 900 pages. So this will probably be a little bit easier to tackle on audiobook. Anyway, very excited for this one, as I am for all of these books, to be honest. As you guys know, I really enjoyed the original Red Rising trilogy, so I did buy Iron Gold by Pierce Brown and Dark Age by him, which is the second, no, the first and the second book of the second trilogy in the Red Rising universe. As you can see, I am already reading Iron Gold again through audiobook. I am enjoying it not as much as I enjoyed the first trilogy because you have multiple POVs here and I'm not that attached to 
anyone besides Daryl at this point, and I am around halfway through, so I'm quite excited to see where this leads. Still, I am enjoying it, I think that's a fine book. And then Dark Age, I might try to read next month because again I have them on audiobook so quite happy to have this series completed for now because the third book is going to come out but I think that that might take another two years so yeah I do have these to complete my Red Rising trilogy or Red Rising series up until this point. In part one of my birthday book haul I did show you one Lynn Flewelling book that already came in the mail but I did say that I was going to purchase the entire Night Runner trilogy or Night Runner series and all of them came in by now. I don't know which one I showed you before, but now I have Traders Moon. I already read this one because this is the third one. I have Shadows Return, The White Road, Shards of Time, and I do think that I am showing you this in order, Caskets of Souls, The Bone Dolls Twin. I think this is the first one in a new trilogy, Hidden Warrior, and the oracle screen these are all yes so the plan is to read these all of these by the end of the year one book per month i am going to try to keep up with uh, chris and andy because they are doing the scala along for all of these books i am going to read fourth one this month but we will see if i can keep up with one book per month it is the goal though i would be very happy if i tackle this entire series in 2021 and then I picked up this beautiful duology by Sean Russell, River Into Darkness. Sean Russell is an author that I wanted to try for a while now, and now I have this very floppy paperback with two of his books, so a duology, as I said. And in this one, you follow The Last Wizard. So it's basically the Twilight of the Mages, only one of these wizards is still alive. And for reasons that we don't know in the beginning of this story, he wants to destroy all magic that is left in the world. But you also have... Um, the followers of a long dead mage apprentice and these are called the Tellarites and these want to have all of these magic powers that is left, they want to unravel all of the mysteries so they are basically fighting against this last mage and it says that this, they have to descend into the perilous depths of a labyrinth cave system. That sounds amazing, that sounds very nice and maybe a little bit dark but I don't mind that, so I'm very excited to see where this one leads. I always like when you have a darker setting, like we had an age with a lot of mages, but now only one remains, and he actually hates magic, or he wants to destroy it for unknown reasons. That sounds very intriguing, so I do hope to get to this one soon, especially because for the entire duology, it's 600 pages. That's 300 pages per book. I might be able to fit this one in. But I'm saying this about all of these books, and there's no way that I will fit in 30 more books by the end of this year. But we can always try. And then I picked up some books for my Expand My Horizon series. So I try to read a little bit more sci-fi. I will read five sci-fi books and by the end I will decide whether or not sci-fi is something that I want to read more of. The first book that I read was Red Rising, but now I do want to continue and hopefully finish five books by the end of the year. So I picked up June, this beautiful edition, and I actually like it even more without the dust jacket. I think that most people know how this looks, but you have Fear is the Mind Killer, which is a badass sentence, so I'm quite happy with it. And I will probably put it like this on my shelves if I had a little bit more space in the future, because I am going to make more shelves, because I, I really like this. I wanted to read this before the movie comes out because movie trailer looks amazing but I know that if I watch the movie before I read the book I will never pick up the book just as with Lord of the Rings so I am going to do this as a body read over with with Lauren over at um, Paperback Empire and we are going to read this one in July already a couple of people on my discord have said that they are going to join us so if you want to then please join us as well because I have heard that this is a tome that's not that easy to get through so if I have some people that I can talk to and that can drive me to actually finish this book I will be very happy and of course I do hope that I will love it but I don't really know what it's about I have seen trailers so I know about the worms and stuff like that but what the actual story is about I don't really know but I'm quite intrigued and then the second sci-fi book that I picked up is Parable of the Sour by Octavia E. Butler so this is an author that I want to, to try anyway it's a very short book it's only 300 pages I don't really know what this is about. I think that it's a dystopian novel where we follow somebody who has the power to feel the pain of others as her own. And I know that John really enjoyed the duology because you also have Parable of the Talents, which is the second book in this duology. And he really enjoyed both of these. So I'm quite interested to see 
but all the fuss is about. Then I have another Greek mythology retelling. So this is, I think, one of the only standalones in this uh, book haul. And that is The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes. This is also the author of A Thousand Chips, which is a retelling of the War of Troy, if I'm not mistaken. This is again a retelling where they focus on two women who played a smaller part in the original myths. So I'm quite excited for this one. It's also very short. It's 330 pages. So I hope that I will fly through this and finish this one in summer. I want to do the same with Ariadne, which was on my part one book haul, because something about Greek mythology retellings just feel like you should read them in summer with the sun, with a cool drink. It just feels like that's fitting. So I do hope that I will be able to do that with this one as well. And everything else that I now have to show you is a complete tower of books that are firsts in a series that I don't really know a lot about necessarily, but I am quite excited still. And the first one is Blood of an Exile by Bryant Nasland. So this book is the first in the series as i said the third one is coming out later this year and in this one you follow somebody who has been exiled because he tried to kill a nobleman and during his um, exile he needs to roam the kingdom and kill dragons so that he's still useful for the kingdom however at some point the monarch calls him back and says i can lift up this banishment if you agree to kill a fellow monarch now first he doesn't want to agree but then he sees that he might be able to save an innocent child in the process so he agrees to do this so you already know that this is a big warrior brood with a big heart and that I'm probably going to love this main character. So yeah, very excited about this one. Also the fact that it's less than 300 pages for adult fantasy, something that I'm always happy about. Then the second one is completely different and this is The Women's War by Jenna Glass. I just really love this cover and to be honest, it gives me Disney vibes, even though this is nothing like Disney stories, I think, because I think that in this book you follow some women in a world where men are at power. But then women discover a new spell that basically controls their own fertility. And this completely shifts all dynamics of power between men and women. And what I really liked about this one as well is that it says a portion of the author's proceeds from this book is being donated to Planned Parenthood in support of women's reproductive freedom. So I do want to support that. So I'm quite happy with this. And for this one, the entire trilogy is already out as well. So I do want to see if I like this one because sometimes feminist books or books with feminist influence, I like that. But if it's too on the nose, I will not. And I will be quite annoyed with it. And yes, I am talking about Once and Future Witches again. So I want to see if Jenna Glass handles this in a way that I find enjoyable, but then I will definitely buy the second and the third book as well. And then the next one is one by an author that I wanted to try for a while now, and that is Rewrite the Storm by Devin Madsen. I think that she started as a self-published author. I don't know if it was with this book or with a previous series, but I'm very excited for this one anyway, because we are following three people, if I'm not mistaken, a warrior, an assassin and a princess in an empire that is ruled by a god emperor. So from the moment that I read God Emperor, I knew that I wanted to try this one. And I think that the cover is beautiful as well. So yeah. First in a series, the entire trilogy is already out, so I don't have an excuse to not try this one, although I do think that it will have to wait until next year. Then a book that I've heard amazing things about, not only from Elliot Brooks, but also from Leslie over at the Nordy Narrative, and a couple of other booktubers as well. But to be honest, it's been a while, so I don't really know what it's about, only that it's a debut again, or at least a new release that came out in 2021, and that is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick, and in this one you follow a con artist. That's basically all I know. I think that there's quite a lot of intrigue as well. And it's a, it's a thick book. It's, uh, again, 600 plus pages. So, okay, it's fine. I, I thought it was bigger. So I don't think that I will be able to squeeze it in. It's also the first in a series, but the second one hasn't come out yet because it's a new release. So I might wait until the second one has a release date and then pick this one up. So I'm definitely very excited because I've heard so many amazing things. So if you've read this one and you want to pressure me to pick it up earlier, then please let me know in the comments down below. And then I have another debut, but the trilogy has come out in completion or the third one comes out this year, one of the two. And that is Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward. John Gwynn says that this is a hugely entertaining debut. And this one is a thick one. It's almost 800 pages. So yeah, it's pretty chunky. Now, if I'm not mistaken, in this one you have a republic, but then you have an invading empire. And it says, the republic faces its darkest hour, yet as Tressia fails, heroes rise. So this sounds very, very entertaining. I think that it has a lot of action, but I hope 
also a lot of political intrigue. I haven't heard a ton of people talk about this, yet the people who I have seen who read this one really liked it. So again, I don't think that I will get to it this year, but it sounds promising and I might read just the first couple of chapters to see if it's something for me and then probably buy the second and the third one so I can binge the series if I would want to. And then another debut, I'm buying a lot of debuts and new releases it seems, and that is The Unbroken by C.L. Clarke. So Every Empire Demands Revolution. What I really like about this one is that we follow somebody who has been stolen as a child and raised as a soldier for a certain empire. So child soldiers is something that, you know, very gruesome and heartbreaking in our world. And I do like that there is probably some representation here in this book as well. But it also says that it has a lot of political intrigue, that it's brutal, complex, that it's impossible to put down. So I've heard some very good things about this one, but then also that some people were a little bit disappointed. It's the first in a trilogy, I think, Magic of the Lost. But it just sounds like I will like it. So this one is maybe one that I will pick up sooner rather than later. It's under 500 pages, barely, it's 490 pages, but still it's a little bit less chunky than some of the other ones. So maybe this is again some one that I will read the first chapter of. Maybe I should do that for all the first releases that I have here. Read the first chapter and then pick which one I will actually already start and which one will have to wait until later. Maybe that's something that I need to do because I still have two more books to show you. Again, first in a series. The first one here is The Wolf of Oren Yarrow by K.S. Villasso. This is the first in a trilogy and the entire trilogy has come out and I really like the covers. Other than that, I don't know, is, is this the Bitch Queen? Yeah, they called me the Bitch Queen, the She-Wolf, because I murdered a man and exiled my king the night before they crowned me. Sounds pretty epic, right? And because I like the cover so much and I saw somebody who had the, the three covers, like like the three spines next to each other, and that looked really beautiful. So I might buy the entire trilogy. And let's see how big this one is. 430 pages. So again, below 500. We shall see if I pick it up. And then the last one that I have is The Ranger of Marzana by John Scovo. This is actually one that doesn't really have the best ratings on Goodreads. I think 3.2 for the first one. The second one just came out and that has a beautiful cover. Again, the beautiful cover persuaded me for these, to be honest. But still, sometimes I just want to try something that maybe not everybody loves, but that doesn't really mean that I won't like it. Two siblings, two nations, one more for all. I Yes, I remember this. And I think that I really liked the premise of it and that's why I picked it up. The empire has destroyed the old ways. One woman will, one woman will fight to bring them back. Sonia is the last ranger of Marzana, an ancient sect of warriors who have protected the land for generations. When her father is murdered by imperial soldiers, she decides to travel across the bitter cold tundra and gain the allegiance of the only other force strong enough to take down the invaders. But nothing about her quest will be easy, because back in the capital city, her brother is training to be the most powerful sorcerer the world has ever seen, and he's fighting for the empire. That's what I like, that you have these siblings who are on opposite sides and who are actually fighting against each other or maybe not specifically against each other I don't know I hope that there will be some kind of dynamic between the two but yeah they are definitely fighting for different sides so quite excited for this one for that reason and I'm quite curious to see if I will like it more than the general Goodreads reader this is also below 500 pages so <laughs> I have picked up a certain type of firsts in a series it seems so those were all the books that I got from some fellow booktubers. Again, thank you so much. Slash that I got from my husband, slash that I bought for myself. I do think that this might be the last book haul for my birthday. I'm not exactly sure because of course I still need to get some presents, but I think that most people are going to buy me board games. However, on my birthday, I am going to go to, I think it's Waterstones. Apparently we have a Waterstones in Brussels. I didn't know that, but Brussels is the international capital of the European Union so I should have known that you probably also have international bookstores there so I am going to visit that Waterstones or Barnes and Nobles but I think it's Waterstones so I will probably make a vlog about that and if I pick up some books then that will be my birthday book haul part three but I do think that this is definitely the majority of the books that I should be expecting so please let me know if you've read any of these or if you are very excited for one of these, you maybe want to read one of these quite soon, then let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know if you picked up 
a new book recently and if you already got to it or if it's on your ever-growing TBR, as is the case with me. As always, I hope that you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Bye!